Join us, friends. Great Scott Spa Guy. Do they know what we have in store for them? They will if they tighten up. And don't double dribble. To the Grey Ghost Spa Guy? Exactly, old chum. No time to waste. To the Grey Ghost. We have not a minute to spare. It's showtime, friends. All right, all right, all right. It is the Spa Guy, and it is... I'm globe trotting with Trey. And we don't know much, but we do know that there's people out there that are wishing Cotton was a monkey. Wouldn't you say that's right, Trey? You know, Spa Guy, I've met actually just yesterday, I met quite a few people that I thought was wishing Cotton was a monkey. <laughs> I mean, wow. And, and friends, if you don't know what that means, go back to episode one. Now, every single episode that we do is not going to have, uh, is not going to be a wishing Cotton was a monkey theme. Uh, but we just wanted that to kind of be an overall theme because wishing cotton was a monkey overall is about the value of truth in history. And what I mean by that is I feel like, and Trey feels like that getting history right is important, not rewriting it to make yourself look better or, or whatever. And there's things that you don't have to tell everything, you know, so I don't mean put negative stuff out there necessarily. But what I am saying is there's things that we know that are true. And to actually know a real person, uh, I think it's important to, to focus on the truth. And we're about the truth. And if we make a mistake in a video, we try to go back and, and fix that. I'm actually doing some updates to some old videos now where I'm going back in and listening to what I said and going, oh, I thought seven years ago that was the truth. Now I know that it's this. So I'm making updates to videos, trying to update them get them more um, accurate, if you will. We actually, so what do you think? We actually, Billy, worked on something the other night that was one of, one of your earlier videos that we realized, or you realized you didn't quite get right. And we have definitely now found that location of where that place was. We're not going to talk about it. That's right. We'll make people wonder what we're talking about. But man, it's going to be a cool location that we have found. Yeah. And I went there and did the best I could at the time. That was very, very early on. And I went there uh, and I got the address right. You were there. You I was there. there. You just didn't but, know where. But now we know exactly where, yeah. not kind of where. So I wanted to point this out. This is a place that uh, that I went not too long ago. And we need to talk about this place in one of the uh, podcasts, Seaside. And um what I love about this is there's a dog on here. What kind of dog is that, Trey? Do you know? Yeah, that's a um, a weenie dog. That's right. We call it a. It would be called a dachshund. Would be the per, uh, proper pronunciation, but some people call it a dash hound. Because if you look at the way it's spelled, it looks like dash hound, but the proper pronunciation is dachshund. That's I thought cool. I would throw that in, but Seaside was a, a beautiful place. Then there's actually a, a movie. I think I've referenced it before in these podcasts that was filmed there. Jim Carrey, uh, The Truman Show, was filmed in Seaside. Yeah, that's pretty cool. So we go vacation there usually once a year. And uh, this this year we went and, and had a great time with the family and the grandkids. It's, it's at the beach. So we'll do an episode about Seaside and talk about some of the ins and outs of that. Maybe we go to Seaside and do an episode. We need to. I have an episode uh, of where I shot the Truman Show, where I show you all the different things, the house that Jim Carrey lived in. But let's save that for another uh, another thing. But I actually have an episode on my channel, on the Spa Guy channel. If you put Spa Guy and Seaside or Truman Show, you'll find that video. Um, so we, you and I ended up in Palm Springs. Was it this year? It was last year, right? Last October. Okay. So, man, time flies. So it was last year. That's my first time in Palm Springs. Was that your first time? That was my first time. Yep. Okay. So we went with uh, a good friend, Richard Crofts. Richard actually has a YouTube channel. Uh, what's Richard's channel? Do you recall? I know it's Richard Crofts, but it's... Um, Dag on, Richard. I'm sorry. Uh, CD. Um, it's something with CD, right? Something. Uh, well, it's Richard Crofts. I'm gonna look real quick just so we so we have yeah, it. Richard's a really cool guy. Um, big. He's a big Elvis fan, um, and uh, he owns he he owns a lot of interesting things, uh, memorabilia wise of Elvis. And I think on his show, he's he uh, actually uh, films inside his room where he has that stuff. Um, yes, and I actually did an interview with uh, Sandy with an I 
Miller. Uh, there in that room, I went to a get together at Richard's house in Las Vegas with a bunch of other, you know, a bunch of Elvis people. Yeah. And um, I was able to, he set it up where I could talk to Sandy with an eye. And um, it's, it's called the, uh, man, come on, Billy. We also watched the Elvis movie in Las Vegas with Richard and Sandy Miller and Stump. And that was quite interesting to actually talk to people that knew Elvis and was around Elvis, what they thought about Elvis. Movie. It is called the Elvis Workshop. And the Richard, Elvis. I'm so sorry that I could not pull that out. I am old, brother. And uh, there's things that I can't pull out that I used to could pull out, but it's called the Elvis Workshop. And Richard talks about um, very knowledgeable, very, very, very knowledgeable. And he talks about... Uh, he has a, a deep knowledge of Elvis memorabilia, records, books, that kind of stuff. Things that I don't know very, really very much about. I, I, and I am, and I think you are more interested in places and events and that kind of stuff. But there's people that are really interested in items, owning a record album, a special album, a special book, that kind of stuff. So he goes over that and the ins and outs of it and really knows a lot of stuff. In fact, do you remember being with me? Where were we? We were in, we were in Michigan. In um, we met up with him. Where were we at? It's two names. Yeah, man, we were in Ann Arbor. Ann Arbor, Michigan. That's it. And we met up. He just happened to be in Michigan at the time. With a football game that weekend. At a football game, and we met up with him. And he was like, "Oh yeah, well, that place that you were just at." This happened on this album, and this happened. So if, if you go back and find that episode, was it the Silver Dome episode? I think yeah. it may have been the Silver Dome that we talked about. But he knows, like, this cut on this record was recorded at this place type stuff. So Richard was nice have, enough. It might have been the Mobile, Alabama concert location that you did. And you used a photo, and Richard was like, that photo was actually there in Ann Arbor, Michigan. It was something, I can't remember what it was, but there was something that he had intimate knowledge of and he, and it helped us because it helped us with the re episode that we were recording at that moment. And I, I just don't, I don't recall what it was, but you'll find it in the episode. So anyway, Richard was nice enough to go with us and he brought his girlfriend along with us and we went there. He had been there many, many times before actually with, uh, Elvis had a security, Dick Grove, Dick and Melissa. So he had spent a lot of time with, with uh, uh, Dick Grove there. So he really knew all of the stories, all of the locations. And you and I tried to film there with Dick. We actually had it set up. When you, when was that? 2019? 2020? 2019. Okay. And so we had it set up there to go to Palm Springs with Dick on a Sunday. It was our last day in Las Vegas before we drew, we flew back on Monday. And um, he called and just his, or actually Melissa, his wife called and just said, Dick just does not feel up to doing this. So sadly we didn't get to go and he passed away just what, six months later, roughly something like that. So we never got to go there with Dick Grove, but we did go there with Richard. On the way there, he actually tells us the story about Al DeVorn. Uh, so that, that video is out. So we got all kinds of different pieces to the puzzle. So Richard is a wealth of knowledge. And what I'm trying to say here is if you get a chance to watch his channel, the Elvis workshop, make sure you go check it out. His name's Richard Crofts, but he was responsible for our success really for this trip because he took us there and said, this happened here, that happened here, this happened here. And he knew a lot of the ins and outs of things that we would have had to study had we gone there alone. So he was really, really uh, key to this whole thing. So a couple of things that we did, Trey, tell them the first place that we went. All right. So when we went into Palm, Palm Springs, we found the that church, right? Yeah, but that's not first. That was not first. First, we went to the honeymoon house. Uh, the, well, of course, the honeymoon house. Yeah. Priscilla. Because that's always going to be your first thing. That's, yeah. that's the honeymoon house. So we went and, there. And then you and I and then and you and I films and saw the swimming pool and everything. Yeah. Honeymoon house. 
And then we went over to the other house where Elvis lived. But first he showed us where um, Marilyn actually lived next door to the honeymoon house. But you didn't know that at that point. We That's didn't right. But he, us. he said that. No, he didn't. You he didn't? That. Okay. We didn't know. Because I remember you texting me later. It was like, listen, what I, look what I have for it. Oh. We remember we were standing right there where that house in that backyard was. Yeah, I mean, they uh, actually adjoin each other. But I thought Richard told us that when we were standing there. Okay. Yeah. All right. So the next thing we did was went to the house that Elvis actually owned in Palm Springs. The interesting thing is, is the honeymoon house um, uh, Elvis didn't own. He only lived there uh, at the most a year. It was basically a rental. And by the way, for those of you that are listening that are not necessarily Elvis fans, this is not an Elvis episode. This is actually about all kinds of stars. You, you're going to be amazed. Yeah, keep listening because it's cool. But, yeah, just stay with us. But we're just kind of setting it up for what we did while we were there. Um, it was I thought it was a lot of fun. The day, it was hot, of course, but you want it to be hot in Palm Springs. I thought it was great weather. And wow, it's just beautiful. When you're standing there, you're surrounded by mountains. So I can see what the attraction was. But we went to his other house. Uh, we also saw, as we're going, he's pointing out all these other things. Well, Lucille Ball and Desi lived here, and we did that, and we did this, and saw all these the things. Pool, Lucy's swimming pool. And remember, yeah. I, I had a photo of Lucy and Desi out there. Yeah. And a, a photo of Lucy at the uh, at the diving board. And uh, we were able to kind of look in, and I think you can rent that now. You can. It's like an Airbnb. We went to um, uh, the Colonel's house there. We went to uh, Wayne Newton's house, didn't we? Uh, uh, what's, the, what's that for them? The flamboyant. Oh, uh, yeah. Liberace's house. Oh, Liberace, yeah. Yeah, Liberace. Um, we went to Clark Gables. Clark Gables' house, oh, I, which I is said. being restored. But wow, what an interesting house. And Frank Sinatra. It was right on the road. Remember Frank Sinatra's. Yeah, yeah the were right there on the road. You're right. Yeah, so something that's interesting now, I haven't put this video out yet, but we filmed at Frank's house where he got mad with Ava Gardner and threw all of her stuff in the driveway, kicked her out of the house. Since then, I've actually filmed all the Ava Gardner stuff. I went to uh, Smithfield, North Carolina, Smithfield, North Carolina, and which is very close to where I grew up, and filmed all the Ava stuff. I was able to go to the farmhouse she lived in and in the... Um, uh, some other houses that she lived in, a school that, that her mother taught at, all these different things that related to Ava Gardner. And she's very much like um, the success for, story of Elvis, which is fascinating to me, how this person that kind of lived out in the country in an old farmhouse ends up being a star in 70 films. How does that happen? You know, And those are just fascinating stories to me. And we'll cover that. We'll do an Ava Gardner episode. Um, at, at some point, because I'm just fascinated by her history as well. So anyway, at the end of the day, we went to all these places, went downtown, saw the uh, Marilyn Monroe thing that you just put in your uh, 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 most recent video where uh, she's there's this giant. How tall is she? 40 feet tall, 50 feet yeah, tall? It's a new statue that they've dedicated to Marilyn Monroe from her most famous uh, you know, scene in the movie where her dress flies up. And a photographer named Bruno Bernard, which is going to be very um, influential in this story that we'll tell today, he captured that uh, image of her on that set. He was friends with Marilyn, and uh, you're going to learn a little bit more about him. But so they honored Marilyn and Bruno Bernard with this light, I mean, huge, what, four or five? Feet. 40 feet tall. Yeah. At least. Marilyn Monroe and you can look up her address, <laughs> you know, and uh, it's blowing in the wind. Yeah, it may be 50 feet tall. It's giant. She's giant. And it's one block off of what I would call Main Street, kind of the main drag through. Stars, you know, they have like Hollywood uh, Hollywood stars there in Palm Springs. Yeah. It's right off of that street, Billy. Yeah, it's one block off of that street. Right. And we actually uh, uh, went down there and did we get ice cream there? Yeah, we did. And we did some stuff there. We found Elvis's star. and I found, I wanted to find Adam West, Batman, yep. he, yep. he had a star, and uh, uh, Lucille Ball, the colonel, had one. So we were able to find all cool kind of uh, old icons. All the big stars at that time lived there 
would would work in Los Angeles, but when they were were taking time off, they would come to Palm Springs. And you're gonna because look. it was very exclusive. And only rich people went there, so they wouldn't be bothered by paparazzi and that kind of stuff. But the the place that you and I explored that this show is about is the reason that the celebrities came to Pump Springs. Okay. So let's talk about that. Late in the in the day, late or in the day, the sun wasn't going down yet, but it's getting close. Yeah. We so ended over, up at a place. Yeah, over there, um, over there at the statue that we just talked about with Marilyn Monroe, they had like some information on her and something jumped out at me when I read it was called the Palm Springs Rackets Club. So I did my thing and I found out where the racket club was located in Palm Springs. So I told spa guy and he was like, yeah, we got to go there. So Billy, we head over to this location and man, how, how much better did it get for us? Because there's a iconic photo of Marilyn Monroe. If you go to my show, I, I've started a new series on Globe Trotting with Trey called Trey on Tour. And these episodes are about other things other than Elvis. People that I'm interested in, famous stars of places and locations. And I give those people and places the Elvis treatment, like I give Elvis. And I, I want to bring these stories back to life for the audience. So anyway, it's on my Trey on Tour, episode three, Palm Springs Racket Club. So please go watch it if you're uh, interested. So there's a photo that you'll see in there of Marilyn Monroe on a swimming pool. And this was captured in 1949. And it was on the diving board of the swimming pool. On the diving board of the swimming pool. And the swimming pool's behind her. And uh, so Billy and I get out of the car and right there in front of us, after we walked a little bit, that swimming pool was still there, Billy. Yeah. All the stuff around it's gone, except for just a little bit of some buildings. The, yeah. All of the tennis courts, all that stuff is gone, but that swimming pool is still yeah. right there blazing. And, and if you if you go and watch my show, you're going to see all kind of icons that you know in that swimming pool that Billy and I captured on the episode. And the cool thing is, luckily, the original part, some of the original part of the racket club when Marilyn Monroe and Clark Gable and everyone were there back in those times is still there today. And you're, I was able to line up the shot of Marilyn on that diving board. The diving board is no longer there, of course, but I was able to, stand in that area where that diving board once was you do see nails where they used to be at and you see in that distance that building that is in the photo where Marilyn Monroe in 1949 mm -hmm. and it's the building it was called the bamboo lounge it was, a, it was a bar area that they loved all the celebrities so let's let's talk a little history Billy before we get into that I want to ask you man when you were out there exploring this place, what, what were you thinking, man? What, were, what was going through your mind? Well, one thing is, is a lot of times when we go back to a place and we're trying to line it up, like the one you were talking about earlier that I filmed years and years and years ago and decided to go back and revisit to see if I could figure out the location. A lot of times you don't have anything to go on. There's no, there's nothing to go. This is the spot here. That swimming pool was the focus of the whole thing. Yeah. And the swimming pool was still there. I couldn't believe it. And the swimming pool was in remarkably good condition. You could go in there and probably dig out behind it, replumb it, and fill it right back up and keep right on going and yeah. rebuild the whole racket club right back around it. So in my in my research, at this point, I had I quickly researched and I found a cool things that we were able to know that this photo was captured right here. Hey, guys, in my research, you're going to see in this episode, there's a photo of Lucille Ball and Desi Arnaz having lunch around that swimming pool. Not only that, I found a photo of um, of Jane's, Jane Mansfeld in a pretty revealing, revealing bathing suit top <laughs> setting around that pool to the left of the diving board. And that's with one of her children, wasn't it? It was a little oh. a little guy. It was a little little boy. So I guess did she have a uh, no? She had girls. I think it was a little boy that was in the photo. I with think her. it was one of her children. 
man. And uh, I found a photo, Billy, there, and I was able to line it up in my shot of the the, the stairway to get out of the pool in the in the shallow end. There is a cool photo of Janet Lee in the water from you know Psycho, you know the famous scene. Mm-hmm. Janet Lee is in the in the in the pool. Elvis Presley's favorite actor. Who was that, Billy? Who was that? Was, uh, um, who he modeled himself after? Yeah, he was buried. He's buried in Las Vegas. We went with Richard to his grave. Um, uh, his name's escaping me, man. His name's escaping you. Come on, yeah. Now. What, what's his name, Billy? As uh, a motorcycle guy. That's, that's why I asked you. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but uh, 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 Janet Tony Lee. Tony Curtis. Tony Curtis. Yeah. Tony. Okay. Tony it, Curtis. It, it hit me. Tony Curtis. I was trying to get you to say it because I'm was, sorry. <laughs> Tony Curtis is standing there with a dog, and the dog is trying to jump into this woman through it, Janet Lee. And it's Tony Curtis, Janet Lee, right there. And that place is still there all these years later. Like yeah. 75 years later, man. So, anyway, and Janet- now the step, let, let me interject. The steps changed. Back then, it was like one step going up. Now it's like a, um, what we in the pool business, they call it a birthday cake. So yeah, it's, yeah. it's levels. Back the then, the photo that you see, there's it's less steps than it is now. It's less back then than it is now, but it's still the same. The same corner, that's yeah. right. The same it's, pool, it's, yeah. But it's still kind of the same. It's still the same design. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, just I'm talking about history. So A wedding cake. December 1934 is when the Racket Club opened. So the story that is out there, there's. Just like with Elvis, there's all these stories out there, and you don't know what's true or not. But what I learned is actor Charles Farrell, Charlie uh, uh, Farrell, not Farrell, but Charles Farrell, he and another actor named um, Ralph Bellamy, they enjoyed playing tennis and they enjoyed like hanging out at these like sportsman lodges and stuff. So they got an idea that they wanted to have a sportsman lodge. So they were out in Palm Springs doing something. Now the story is they were riding on horses and they come up on this land and they saw a sign and they contacted the person and the guy sold the land for like nothing, like $2,000 for like 200 acres. Yeah. And and these two actors bought the land. Yeah, I think it was three thousand. I watched your video. It's in the video. I think it was three thousand dollars. Okay. Yeah. So and guys, I want you to go back and watch the video. Yeah, because I may be wrong too. And so anyway, so they buy this land, man. All right. So what they did was they built they built like a little part of the racket club, not what it would become, but they like built one little building and then they built a tennis court. And that's how it started. And as Charles said, it just started growing. And they they set they sold membership. Okay. They started selling like membership to, to the tennis courts and to this little racket club. Well, they started able to get a lot of celebrities started coming in and they were able to sell more, uh, sell memberships for higher prices with celebrities. So the 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 money that was being brought in, they were able to expand their racket club. Then they built two tennis courts. Now, when you and I were out there, we didn't realize where the tennis courts were. There's a tennis court out there now. It was not there back then. Mm -hmm. The tennis courts, Billy, are to the right of the swimming pool. Mm -hmm. And I have photos of. Just separated by a hedgerow. Oh, uh, um, I have photos of, uh, what's that, that icon actor, not Rock Hudson, but um, what's the other? Clark Gable was one of them in the photo. I'll get to Clark, but this guy was. um, oh, uh, uh, Spencer Tracy, not Spencer Tracy. Uh, the other one that was like Rock Hudson, you know, he was a leading man. He, um, he well, was Rock Hudson was out there too. Spencer Tracy, all those they were. Well, this actor, you have to go watch my video. There's a cool shot of him getting out of the deep end on the left side of the diving board, and behind him, you see the fence of the tennis courts. Mm-hmm. So those tennis courts were right up to the swimming pool area where all the you know chairs were so that those two tennis courts were out that way so so anyhow 
all the celebrities started coming to Palm Springs. It was only like two and a half hours from Los Angeles. And it was a place for them to escape to. Okay. I don't think it's that far. I think it's shorter than that, but that's all right. Been two hours, something like that. Yeah. Yeah. It was a place for them to escape to. And I'm talking about Earl Flynn. I'm talking about or Errol Flynn. Or Errol, what... is, is Errol, is Errol, right? Errol. <laughs> yeah. But Earl, his brother. Earl, his brother was there. You know, his country brother. He was there too. So hey, I don't a lot know. Of people don't know that though. It's Errol Flynn. You know, yeah. I, I butchered that one. I sometimes <laughs> butcher that. So whatever. But anyway, when I think he was Robin Hood. Uh, uh, somebody yeah, was. Was. so yeah. pointed that out to me and I, I, I didn't put two to two together, but I knew that I knew of him as Robin. You recognize him. Yeah. Uh, there's pictures of uh, Clark Clark Gable there playing. Clark uh, Gable is playing uh, chess out on the line there with Charles Farrell, Farrell, who was the founder of the record. giant chess pieces. Giant chess pieces. Now, yeah. man, we looked and looked, we tried to find some kind of like remnants of that. Yeah, anything. There's anything. It's, sand. it's basically sand. You and I stood over it somewhere, right? Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, so the famous story out there, okay, so they had a bamboo lounge, which is that building that is still there that I point out into the video if you watch the, the film. Guys, inside the bamboo lounge, what the first ever Bloody Mary was created. That's where the Bloody Mary came from was the racket club in Palm Springs inside that building. It's still out there abandoned. All right, so the, the story goes is, and I, I, the bartender was a famous bartender. I luckily found a photo of him that I put in the episode, and his name, I made sure to honor him with his name on the photo. So a lady came in there one day, and she goes up to the bar and asks the bartender, hey, have you seen any celebrities here today? And the bartender looked at the man sitting at the bar drinking and said, hey, fella, have you seen any celebrities here today? And the man said, nope. That man was Clark Gable. <laughs> and the lady never, the lady didn't even recognize Clark Gable. And he just sat there and drank and told the lady, nah, ma'am, I hadn't seen anybody here today. She was, <laughs> you know, she took it. That's, that was the famous story that they told over the years there at, that came out of the racket club. So Lucille Ball and Desi Arnaz, they fell in love on the movie called Too Many Girls, which ended up being pretty much Desi Arnaz's real life. So <laughs> if you go and explore Desi, he was a Cuban, you know, and uh, Cubans didn't really uh, think that one woman was enough for them, you know. So even Lucy, even Lucy, I'm unbelievable, you know, because Lucy, you know, I, I, lo I grew up loving Lucy. I just always liked the show when I was out in Andy Griffith's show and stuff, but I never saw Lucy as beautiful. But now I look at her and I see her as her young, younger self and stuff. I'm like, wow, Lucy was really pretty for real. Yeah, she was a knockout. You know, and she, um, I ain't going to say this, but that might be another episode. Yeah. But anyway, so Desi Arnaz and Lucille Ball fall in love on this movie set, which that's what actors do, you know. And uh, supposedly, after the wrap of this movie, they get in the car, and they head to the racket club, and they spend a few days together in one of those villas out there, Billy, mm -hmm. that were built on the property. So that's a that was a famous story that said Lucy and, and I have all these pictures of Lucy and Desi out there. So I would say that's probably a high chance of being true, because there's pictures of of, of Desi Arnaz on stage in the Bamboo Lounge. Yeah, I was gonna say they perform there. There's mm -hmm. pictures of Lucy and Desi during I Love Lucy, Lucy inside the Bamboo Lounge having dinner. So Man, she was reading something. What was that? Was that, Were those telegrams or? It looked like, it. yeah, you're right. It looked like it could be telegrams. So, and she may have been there just talking about things that people okay. sent her on the show or something. So think about this, Billy. They filmed an iconic episode of I Love Lucy. They may have driven to, to Palm Springs and spent the weekend after the filming. I'm sure they did. At this place where we were. All right. So you'll, you guys will like this. Spencer Haywood. Spencer Haywood. That was a basketball player. Spencer right. Tracy. <laughs> I'm butch. Hey, guys, I've been in 93 degree heat today filming. And man, I'm <laughs> feeling it right now. Spencer Tracy. There's a cool photo of him playing tennis that I put in the video. Spencer Tracy had a uh, affair with Catherine Hepburn. Well, 
Catherine Hepburn and Spencer Tracy would spend a lot of time at the racket club because only one photographer was allowed at that racket club. And that was Bruno Bernard, Bernard of Hollywood. He is the guy I'm about to get to in a minute that captured Marilyn Monroe on that diving board. So it was an exclusive club membership. Celebrities could go there and not worry about gossip hitting the world. So Spencer Tracy and Hepburn, how I read up on it, they would hang out at the wreck. So Billy, we don't know what happened. That's why I wish that the walls could talk because those walls of those buildings saw a lot of these icons that we love doing a lot of crazy stuff probably out there. Mm -hmm. this All right. So and Spencer Tracy, for, for those that are my age, could you think of a movie Spencer Tracy's in, Trey? Um, the mad, uh, it's a mad, mad, mad world. Okay, so that was the one I was going to bring up. People that are in my era would probably remember Spencer Tracy as the police chief in It's a Mad, 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 Mad World. Yeah. And uh, he's the guy that that he's so cool and calm and he's wearing the hat and they go tell him about the uh, about the treasure and they're all frantic trying to get to the treasure. Well, he thinks he knows and he just kind of goes and gets it and leaves with it. You know, it's that kind of, he plays the cool cat in it. But it, even at that time, he was very old when he was playing that part. But I love his part in that. Outside of that, I honestly can't think of anything that he was in because it was old era. You yes, know? old era. I, I saw him um, when I became a fan of Clark Gable. I wanted to watch a lot of Clark Gable's films and kind of just study uh, study what he did, did and stuff. And uh, he was, uh, there's a really good film of he and Clark Gable. They start together in a mm -hmm. in a really good movie. Uh, and if you hadn't seen Friends, if you hadn't seen It's a Mad, 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 Mad World, do yourself a favor. It is action packed and it is filled with stars. I yeah. mean, one right behind the other. Icons. It is unbelievable. Mickey Rooney. Mickey Rooney. Uh, yeah. uh, Sid Caesar. Uh, 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 who? who else? When it done nuts. Didn't done not. Um, Del Louise is in it. Uh, I mean, no, I'm talking Jonathan Winters is in it. Jonathan Winters, okay. Um, it's it's just co completely um, star filled to to the max. Another, what's the guy with the big nose that's at the very beginning? Um, big the big nose. Uh, come on, Billy. He's an icon, but all these people were icons. This movie was in the '60s. It's just, I promise you, it is worth the watch. It is great. And uh, so anyway, let's get back to your part. <laughs> All right. So Marilyn Monroe brought me there, luckily. And um, she's on that diving board that you're going to see in this in this story. And uh, so how does she get there? Well, you know, the story that they like to say is she was discovered by Vice President Johnny Hyde of the William, William Morris Agency out there at that swimming pool when these photos were captured. That is what is on the on the hysterical markers, mm -hmm. um, springs. Mm -hmm. And, you know, so when I read this stuff, I'm like, well, just my experiences with Elvis, I got to make sure. <laughs> right. Mm -hmm. So unfortunately, that's not true at all. And the reason that I know that is Marilyn Monroe was introduced to Johnny Hyde at a New Year's party. December 30th, 1st, 1948. This photo was captured in 1949. So Johnny Hyde falls in love with Marilyn Monroe. Now, Johnny Hyde was like a five foot five, ball headed, older guy. All right. But he was the vice president of the William Morris Agency. Marilyn Monroe was an actress. That really was not, of course, was not known at this point. It was getting a little bitty, maybe one-liners, bit parts, okay? And, uh, well, I guess she uh, she knew what she was doing because, oh, Johnny really met, this guy left his wife for Marilyn. Johnny Hyde left his wife for Marilyn Monroe, Billy. And, I mean, I can see why. I mean, you know, you, you see pictures of Marilyn Monroe. But anyway... The story is that that 
uh, Bruno Bernard was capturing Marilyn Monroe. So Bruno Bernard was friends with Marilyn Monroe. So he wanted to do a photo shoot with her. So he told her, hey, come to Palm Springs with me this weekend. We'll go. To, I'll take you to the racket cl uh, club and we'll do a photo shoot out there. So Marilyn Monroe rides to Palm Springs for the first time with with um, Bernard of Hollywood. That's that was his moniker in Hollywood. He was the only photographer, as I mentioned, that was allowed to take photos of stars on the on the premises of the racket club. So they loved this guy. They trusted this guy. And he captured some all amazing photos that I found. I found a, a photo of the one of the actresses from A White Christmas on that same diving board. I, he, he utilized the diving board, Billy. A lot of beautiful young actress back then had photos on that diving board around the swimming pool. And floating in the pool, Rock Hudson, um, uh, Tony Curtis, everyone that I've mentioned there. Um, who's that other actor that, that was in the pool? He'll come to me. So um, anyway, the story that Bruno Bernard says is that he's taken photos of Marilyn Monroe at the swimming pool. And this man comes up behind and was like, hey, Bruno, who's this hot girl? Right. Mm -hmm. And he introduces Marilyn to Johnny Hyde. And he said he says, can I go? get some photos and take of you for my own personal use to, to Marilyn Monroe. So Johnny Hyde goes to his room and gets his camera because he's going to come out and take photos of this girl in, in a bathing suit here at the pool. Well, supposedly Marilyn asked Bruno Bernard is, hey, Bruno, who is that jerk? You know, when he went back to the room and he said, he said, well, that jerk is Johnny Hyde and uh, he's a vice president of the William Morris Agency. Oh, really? You know, her, her, she changed after she learned who it was, but guys, that's not true. They knew each other months before this. So what I speculate is they fell in love. Johnny Hyde, of course, becomes her agent. Johnny Hyde is the reason Marilyn Monroe is an icon because Johnny Hyde fought for Marilyn to get bigger roles in pictures. So if it's not for this relationship right here, we would probably not know Marilyn Monroe. I, I would well, say it was really, uh, this is actually a wigwam episode. Wishing cotton was a monkey. That's right. Right. That's true. They're guess. saying it's one way and it was really another way. It was really the other way. They met at the new year's. Anyway, fast forward 49, these photos are captured. So those dates don't add up. All right. And it's in the biographer's books of Marilyn Monroe was that she, they were introduced at this new year's party in Beverly Hills, California. Nights and, and and the reason that people are getting the stories mixed up is the photo shoot on the diamond board, and also there's a photo of Marilyn dancing with Johnny Hyde in the bamboo lounge at the racket club on New Year's 1949. So mm -hmm. the next New Year's they had New Year's at that racket club in Palm Springs that we explored. And she was wearing heels. He's about six inches shorter than her in that photo. You saw that. Okay. Yeah, yeah this very interesting photo. So Johnny Hyde tried to get Marilyn to marry him. And she would not do it. But he, uh, they stayed together for a while. Now, I don't know how, how true that was. But he got her rose, as I said, and was very influential to her career and becoming who she did become. And the interesting thing that I found out was he invited her to go down to the racket club to spend some holiday with him in Palm Springs. And she said she didn't, she said no. And he died like two days later. He had wow. a heart attack and passed away. Wow. And now I need to research and see, was he at the racket club when he had, had the heart attack? So, so the racket club is so famous in the fifties. They, during the summer hiatus of I Love Lucy on CBS, CBS had the Charlie Farrell show, and it was set at the Racket Club in Palm Springs. And on the opening episode is what I play for you when you go and watch my Trey on Tour episode of the place. I play the opening episode credits, and they fly over with back then a, a helicopter. Billy and I now could do it with a drone. <laughs> they fly over the racket club 
and fly over the swimming pool. And there is that swimming pool that we film forever captured on this cool film with Charlie Farrell at the swimming pool waving at you on the opening of this episode. So all the episodes only lasted like, I think, one season. And all the stories are set at the racket club, Billy. That's pretty cool. I, I, I didn't know if I flew the drone out there or not. I don't, in fact, I know I didn't because you can't fly the drone in Palm Springs. It's too close to the airport. Yeah, you couldn't, you couldn't do yeah. it. So uh, I had a question about something, and this is kind of an aside. And that is, you were saying that I, what I was envisioning is them, her on the diving board, him standing there with the camera, the other guy walks up. Did they talk like they talked in the movies at that time? Hey, can I take a picture of her? See, I'll go to get my camera from the room. See, did they do that? Well, say this, ask Bruno for my own personal use. Can I go get my camera and bring it back and take it? Hey, Bruno, for my own personal use, see, can I go get my camera from my room, see, and come take some pictures of this pretty young lady, see? <laughs> yes, see, you can, see? <laughs> That's how they did and it. Aaron was like, who's that there, see? <laughs> who's that they jerk? always talk really, 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 really fast. It's like run-on sentences. I tell you what, we're going to go down to the racket club, and we're going to – uh, make a Bloody Mary, and we're going to do this, and we're going to go out to the diving board, and we'll take some pictures, and we'll do this. Is that all right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that is true when you think about it now. It's, uh, like you said, they, they they talk differently. They mm -hmm. were trained. The actors and actresses back then, everything was so proper, and everything was just so fake, I guess, as we can say. They were trained to talk certain ways. I mean, they had to take classes. Uh, studios back then hired you. you. You and I, if we got booked to a studio, Billy, they would put us on contract and then we would pretty much be like cattle and we would have to go do whatever they told us to go do and send us wherever. And uh, Lucille Ball, Marilyn Monroe, James Gardner, Clint Eastwood, all of these people were like that. They learned how to ride horses. They learned how to dance. They learned how to play tennis. They learned how to ski. They learned how to do everything. Well, we mentioned uh, Ava Gardner earlier and we've got this. Tied up. Thank you. Thank you very much. Well, that means we got three minutes left. But earlier when we were talking about Ava Gardner, when they signed her to a deal, then she they had to try to, to deprogram her Southern speech. And I think the very first movie that she was in, she spoke in the movie, and then they had somebody overdub it because you couldn't understand anything she was saying. Yeah. See, yeah. I, you know, I, I know I have a Southern accent. Some people say I don't. And but I'm conscious of things just because of my acting and, and stuff like that. But think of Matthew McConaughey. Girls love how he's all right, all right, all right. all right, all right, all right. I mean, he's like that in every movie. Yeah. Um, and that's probably how I would be if you ever, if you ever got lucky and you did something that was a successful and then it led to two to three, 10 things is you would just talk like yourself because that is what made you that so back to the racket club billy this the racket club of palm springs which is so cool that it's still out there i don't know how it's still out there like it is and it's, it just seems like it's just been well it's been neglected in my opinion right i mean yeah i mean i would be curious at how the pool's still there and the buildings are still there but the racquetball i mean the tennis courts are gone charlie fair you know, literally nothing but sand Charles, Charles Farrell sold the racket club in the 70s. And uh, it, it ran for, I don't know if it ran through the 80s and maybe 90s. And then it kind of just started disappearing, started going into getting into bad shape at that point. And it's been sitting out there, man. I had somebody come in on there and said that they went, uh, uh, explored the place or saw the place in the late 90s. And it was in bad shape. It's got to be valuable property. And didn't they have a, um, I may be mixing it with another story, but didn't they have like a, a neighborhood for people that, that went to the club? Wasn't there a racket club neighborhood? Yes. Well, see, that's what like I'm racket saying. Racket club right? acres or something that like that? That's what I'm saying, guys. Palm Springs grew because of the racket club. Before the racket club, the celebrities were not in Palm Springs. The celebrities came to Palm Springs because of this place that we're talking about today. And those villas popped up and then the housings, the housing communities around the, the racket club were built with the celebrities. Mm -hmm. So let's imagine that, Billy. 
if you, if you and I were living back then and we were who we are today filming our YouTube show, you know, I know that didn't, didn't exist, but perhaps we could go back in time and know about this. We would know where to go and see all the celebrities and know where Lucy and Desi and Clark Gable's at and everyone. We yeah. just go and somehow get into the racket club. Yeah, just pay it, pay the fee, go in. Pay the fee and, and go in. And the, the fee, I believe, was like $175. Two hundred, yeah, like that, and the celebrities were happy to pay that. Yeah, oh, it was easy for them. Yeah, so, and you got to imagine being somebody like Clark Gable and Lucy and Desi and things like that is you probably want a place like the Racket Club, where you could go there and trust that paparazzi were not going to be all around this place, and you can just go hang out and talk and have a good time, go swimming. Mm -hmm. I mean, they had a community swimming pool, pretty much. Mm -hmm. I mean, Lucy could be swimming with uh, Janet Lee. And Clark Gable could be smoking a cigar with Desi Arnaz. I imagine that's how it was. They said Charlie Farrell, even after he retired, he would go every morning and hang out around the swimming pool. And he would just go and talk to people. Wouldn't you? Cigars. I would. Go and smoking cigars. Yeah. He's hanging out with beautiful girls all the time. I mean, that is the life. And that's they the serve life. food there. So there, you could go there and eat breakfast. And Ralph Bellamy, Ralph Bellamy ended up only staying in it for a few years and then he showed sold his share to his partner so that means he and his partner they were not you know they got along and one partner was not a moron and that he was able to make money really? <laughs> yeah. so there was actually a time when some some one of the partners wasn't an idiot and tried to to crash the club yeah and then palm springs wouldn't have happened and then palm springs would never have happened wow i didn't even know that was a thing but, but it all started because they loved tennis. Amazing. And tennis was very popular. There's photos in my in my episode, Paul Newman out there playing tennis. Cool hand loop, Paul Newman with a tennis club. Where That's you, you were trying to think of earlier was Paul Newman. Oh, no, it was not. Cool hand loop. Cary Grant. Oh, Cary Grant. Okay. There's a photo of Cary Grant. You know, I, for some reason, I get Rock Hudson and Cary Grant mixed up. Now, I'm sure Cary Grant would not like that. <laughs> <laughs> mixed up. And because uh, they were both the big leading men yeah. at the time. And uh, uh, Cary Grant is getting out of the swimming pool. And you can see the fence of the tennis courts, which helped me know like, oh, wow, those tennis courts was right there up against the. Um, the pool. You know, right. Well, it's a hedge right there. The hedge was right there up yeah. against the pool area. And then there was tennis courts on the other side of the building over there, too. Right. From the area. And in the picture where Marilyn Monroe, when you go and watch it, you'll see there was a building that ran. Okay, so here's the diving board. There's a building that ran right here down that area of the swimming pool and then the building that ran in front of the swimming pool. This building in front of the swimming pool is still there. That building looked like it was knocked down in the 70s. Yeah. Unfortunately. So when the other owners, they took that down because I found a postcard of the place in the 70s and that building was gone. Uh -huh. So that is what happened there. I don't think it burned. I believe in my video I said it burned, but I think I found out that maybe they knocked it down. Yeah, well, some people said that. I've, re I've read that, that it burned on that side. No, what burned, Billy, really, what burns is a hotel. Ah. But that was not a part of the original. That was not part of it. And you see, these people, they write these articles. They have no clue pretty much what they're talking about. Because, you know, they they want to say it's the racket club. No, the racket club is that is that building is still there. Yeah. That's it's like the Eagles nest with Elvis. Yeah. No, it's still there, guys. The yeah. location is right there. Yeah. And man, I'm, it just makes me sad. I, I say it at the end of the video, like how iconic this place is. Imagine the stories that happened out here. Imagine the celebrities that were right there and right there and right there and just hanging out, enjoying their day. And imagine how sad it is all these years later. It's just sitting out there rotting away and it doesn't look like there's any hope. And it was responsible for Palm Springs even being there. Yeah. And they didn't, they didn't do anything right. to try to preserve it. So like, so, so, so a Hollywood mogul, which they don't care about history. I mean, they're trying to do away with TCM. Have you read that? Mm -mm. They, yeah. They don't care about old movies now. They're, they're like getting, they're going to get rid of TCM. Hmm. Um, but anyway, somebody that, Somebody that's worth nine hundred million dollars, all right, that are that's out there that's a part of Hollywood, a big executive. You're telling me it wouldn't be a cool, a great investment 
for you to do the history or, hey, bring me on board. I'll help you with it. <laughs> or the spa guy. And bring the Palm Springs Racquet Club back to life and make that Hollywood History Museum of Palm Springs and promote what you have going on in Los Angeles with your new state-of-the-art uh, movie museum. Promote that in Palm Springs with what you have in L.A. and then send people to Palm Springs to, to hang out and at a resort of the at the old Palm Springs Racquet Club where the original building has been saved. And yeah. swim in the swimming pool that Clark Gable and Marilyn Monroe swam in once upon a time. Mm -hmm. And Come play on. a little pickleball too. And bring the tennis courts back. But, but you have probably to pickleball this time. Pickleball, but you have to put the tennis courts back where they were. All right. So I'll I'll finish this. We're we're over by five minutes. So just one little extra thing. Why do they call it pickleball? I don't know, really. Okay, so I'm gonna tell you. So this is a little tidbit for all that you don't know. In tennis, what they've started doing, you'll see them where they take a full tennis court and they cut it down into smaller courts and they play pickleball. And that's for people that are older, like myself, that can't run as much. So you can still play tennis. You just don't have to run as much because it's a smaller court. It was named after the inventor's dog. His dog's name was Pickle. So we'll end it with that right there. Thank you, friends. Thank you all so much for watching Wickwam or listening to Wickwam. Until next time, tighten up every chance you get and don't double dribble. And please, guys, go watch my Trey on Tour episode of the Palm Springs Racket Club. And you're going to learn some more history. Yeah.